Stem cell transplantation is the process of using cells that are taken from the bone marrow or from the peripheral blood and then reintroduced to be able to support a patient after high-dose chemotherapy is given or as a way to augment the immune system to be able to fight against cancer. We used to call these types of therapies bone marrow transplant because the older, more conventional method of collecting stem cells is through bone marrow biopsies and extracting those cells from the bone marrow. We now call them stem cell transplants more commonly because those cells are now collected from the peripheral blood. So stem cell transplantation is commonly performed in two major ways, either as autologous peripheral blood stem cell transplants where a patient's own cells are being captured and those cells are reintroduced after high-dose chemotherapy. That process is really being done as a form of rescue to be able to give very high-dose and intensive chemotherapy to be able to eradicate lymphoma and then to reintroduce those autologous cells to be able to recover the normal red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets. The second form of transplantation that's commonly employed is allogeneic stem cell transplant where another individual's bone marrow or stem cells are collected and then introduced into the patient as a way both of bringing back that uh, normal immune system but also of bringing in a new immune system where that immune system may also have the ability to fight against the lymphoma. So the most common application for autologous stem cell transplant is for patients with Hodgkin lymphoma or for diffuse large B cell lymphoma or for aggressive behaving lymphomas when that lymphoma comes back uh, after going into remission the first time. And that's when autologous transplants are commonly used. They also have been commonly used in patients with mantle cell lymphoma and T cell lymphomas as a way of being able to consolidate or to make a remission last for a longer period of time. Allogeneic stem cell transplants are commonly used in later times of relapse after the disease has come back multiple times. In some cases, we found, like in diffuse large B cell lymphoma and Hodgkin lymphoma, that this is a very effective therapy where the lymphoma can be cured with autologous stem cell transplantation. Allogeneic stem cell transplant also can be curative, but it's a therapy with greater risks, and so it needs to be applied more carefully. The risks of autologous stem cell transplant stem in part from the high-dose chemotherapy that's given before an autologous stem cell transplant, and most of those risks come from the chemotherapy itself. Those are typically late effects like mucositis that can occur from that transplant, so sores in the mouth and sores in the GI tract all the way through. It can also uh, cause decrease in the blood count, so a drop in the red blood cell count and white blood cell count and platelets. With the drop in the red blood cell count, that puts it patients at high risk for infection. The drops in the red blood cell count and the platelets often require transfusions afterwards. And those are mostly related to the chemotherapy and not necessarily to the stem cells. The stem cells themselves are being used to be able to recover from that high-dose chemotherapy. The other risks that are associated with transplant that occur with allogeneic stem cell transplant are sometimes risks that can come from the transplant that's itself. And those are problems like graft versus host disease, where the graft itself, in addition to being an effective therapy that fights against the lymphoma, can sometimes have bad effects where it attacks the, the normal patient's tissues, like the GI tract or the skin or the liver. So there are other complications of transplantation that can be issues. Venoocclusive disease of the liver is one. That's a problem that used to be a more common complication of transplantation and could sometimes even be a life-threatening or fatal problem. That is becoming less of a problem with some of the more advanced ways that we monitor patients in the post-transplant setting, monitoring liver function tests and managing patient's care to try and reduce that toxicity, but it is something that can occur on occasion and there now are therapies that are out there that are available like defibrotide that can help to overcome VOD when, when it does occur. Tuximab vidotin is a therapy that can be used in Hodgkin lymphoma when the disease comes back after transplant. It can sometimes also be used as a maintenance therapy for patients who are at high risk that when they go into a stem cell transplant. 
Likewise, lenalidomide can be used post-transplant, sometimes as a maintenance therapy, and for patients who have uh, their lymphoma come back for certain types of lymphomas, like mantle cell lymphoma. It's very important for patients to have a very detailed discussion with their doctors prior to the transplant to know uh, in very great detail what to expect going into the transplant, both in terms of the side effects, how long the hospitalization will be, what the kind of care will need to be after hospitalization in terms of follow-up, and what the long-term effects will, will be in terms of how long it will take to recover to a normal life. So there are a number of great resources uh, through the Lymphoma Research Foundation that are available to patients considering transplantation. I always recommend that patients visit the lymphoma.org website and to find the latest and most up-to-date information that's available there for them.